My name is Shay, and this is my story. Growing up, life just really wasn't easy for me. My middle school years were defined by bullying and sexual assault, and I walked into high school feeling broken and completely doubting my self-worth. As a child, I'd always believed in God, but with everything that I'd been through, I believed that he deserted me, and I wanted nothing to do with him. I started to believe that the only way I could fix how I was feeling was to find someone to love me. I continually found myself in toxic relationships. Three years after graduation, I was a single mom of two baby boys, and I had been in and out of a transition home. After the birth of my second child, I found myself with little to no support, living on income assistance in a mobile home in Hope, BC. With all that I had been through, nothing could prepare me for what I was about to go through next. On November 19th, 2018, I noticed my newborn son Sawyer had a cough. When I came to check on him again, he had suddenly gone blue. We rushed to the hospital and we were transferred more than three times. All of his vitals were dropping and he was on the fifth level of breathing support. I remember sitting in the corner of the hospital room as the doctors, nurses, and specialists surrounded my little boy, covered in tubes. Tears streamed down my face. I cried and I prayed desperately again for the protection of my son. We later learned that Sawyer had RSV, which is deadly for preterm babies like him. Sawyer was diagnosed with severe GERD, failure to thrive, and a tight pylorus. Last August, Sawyer's health took another serious drop, and we were back at Children's Hospital once more. After two months in the hospital and 11 surgeries, I was completely hopeless. I didn't know what to do or where to turn. I had heard of Southside Church before, and out of desperation, I decided to message in on Instagram and to ask for a prayer. I was messaged back right away and was told there was a team praying for my family every day. I was finally encouraged. Around this time, Kelsey Oz, an Instagrammer that I followed, reached out to me. Her daughter used a similar G-tube to Sawyer, and she came in with coffee to visit us in our hospital room. I was so exhausted, and I can't express how meaningful it was to have someone to talk to that cared. As we were chatting, I found out that Kelsey also attended Southside herself. I started wondering if God was reaching out to me through this church and these people. After three months in the hospital, we were finally able to bring Sawyer back to our home in Hope. It was nearing Christmas time, and the season was particularly heavy for my little family. One afternoon, I looked out my window to see a car full of Southsiders pulling up to my home. They knocked on the door with a sunshine box in hand. The box was filled with hundreds of dollars worth of gift cards, Christmas presents for my boys, and a card filled with encouragement. I was brought to tears by the generosity of the church, and my boys were so happy. I just couldn't believe a church that I had never attended could reach out to my family in such a tangible way, and there was something I just couldn't shake about it. I knew in my heart that the God I thought had deserted me was reaching out to me in this moment with his love. That night, on the floor of my kitchen, I turned my heart back to God. I immediately went onto the church website and I clicked through every tab. I knew I needed to go to Southside. Because of my son's health issues and the long drive, I decided to start by listening to the Southside podcast. The first message that I'd listened to was so powerful that I cried through the entire thing. Right away, I decided to step out of my comfort zone and to sign up to join a group. I still had so many questions, but I wanted to jump in and find out more about this loving God that was talked about at Southside. I even ordered a Bible and a devotional book and started to teach my sons how to pray. Before ever physically attending church, I met with my new Southside group. I met Sarah, the leader of the group, and she immediately took me under her wing and welcomed me in. I had never felt like I belonged anywhere like this before. I was met with so much acceptance and never once felt like I had to prove myself to anyone. It felt like I was home. In our group's Facebook chat, we were talking about our next steps with God, and a few of us decided to get baptized. Even though I had been a part of Southside Online, I hadn't been to church in person. So needless to say, this was a big Sunday for me. I walked in so nervous, but I was met with smiling faces and a warm welcome. Not only that, but the kids team knew that Sawyer was coming and had trained smiling volunteers waiting for me at the front, fully ready to take care of him for the morning. In the service, Pastor Mike talked about God's unconditional grace and how no matter what, no matter how far, and no matter how often we wander off, there is always a well-worn path back to him. He talked about his unconditional love for us and how God couldn't love me any more or any less. After the message, I walked up to the tank and I took my next step of baptism. 
I felt so complete, so filled with joy, and so close to God, and I knew this is where he wanted me to be. And needless to say, I jumped out of the tank and gave Sarah a big wet hug. What started as a prayer in a sunshine box during a time when I needed help the most turned into something so much more. God used the loving people of Southside Church to reach out to me with tangible help and to bring me into a relationship closer with himself. I know that God loves me and that he fights for me and that he is with me and that now I always have someone to turn to. Moving forward, I just wanna extend the same love that was extended to me. I wanna show the love of Jesus by helping others just like I was helped. I'm starting to understand that a life that's full is one spent looking past yourself to the needs of others. I wanna teach my kids to do the same. I'm so excited for them to grow up in this community and to see their faith grow. Looking back now, I see God with me throughout my life. I see him with me in those dark hospital rooms late at night and at home when I wasn't sure how we were gonna afford next month's bill. I see that he's been with me my whole life and that he led me to an amazing church family and to himself. I can't believe the hope I have now, and this is just the beginning.